Welcome back to another video here on Free Will Photos. Today, we're going to be editing a portrait of, I guess, a really popular portrait photographer in New York. If you know who this man is, then please comment down below. Uh, he was outside at the Build Expo when I went back in September, and I captured his photo as he was posing for a few people, and a lot of people seem to really know who this guy was. I have no idea who he is, but... Just wanted to, you know, mess around, see what I can get out of editing this particular image. So the very first thing that I'm going to do, like I typically always do, is click on Brilliance AI and let On1 kind of compute and think itself through. So now I feel like the tones, the exposure, the color, all of that is popping quite well. Again, I, I understand Brilliance AI is a hit or miss tool for some people, uh, but I am really finding that it works well, at least with my Canon files. Now, this color, I don't think is doing much of anything. So instead of it not introduce or instead of allowing on one to make a decision about it, I'm just going to reduce it completely and I'll modify the colors however I see fit. Now, with the tone, maybe it can be a little bit more contrasted. I don't know. I can't really make up my mind on if I want this to be a brighter, uh, more standard type of edit or if I want it to be something a little bit more airy. What I do know, though, is I want to change my camera profile. And I think I want to go with something from my actual camera. This looks like the image that I really want to edit, which is camera neutral. Camera portrait is okay. Camera standard is also okay. But I really like what camera neutral is giving me on this particular edit. That's all I'm going to do with the Brilliance AI tone and color. If I hold down my backslash key, you can see this is what I came into the editing bay with. And here is where I am right now. I feel like this is a good place for me to continue with the overall edit. Now, what I want to do, I'm just looking to see uh, where do I want the attention to go? Because I don't think I need it on anything that's down here. Everything that's happening is really here. Uh, so let's go ahead and add in a vignette the way that I normally do my, my images. So I'll hit M twice and we'll click there. Yeah. Now, I don't want this to be like crazy dark coming in on, on this gentleman. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just very ever so slightly pull down just ever so slightly, right? Uh, some structure as well as bringing down the exposure. So that way, if I turn this off and on, you can see I'm just kind of focusing in on him. And honestly, this is all I think the photo really needed. But where's the fun in that? Because, you know, uh, we can do so much more inside of On One. So let's come over here to effects and add in. Let's see what this photo does in black and white. And before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and create a snapshot and call this base edit. So that way we can always get back to this in the event that I need to uh, get back to that. So we're going to go ahead and throw in a black and white. And instantly, I, I do like what I'm getting here in black and white. There's a lot of tonal variations that are going on. And I believe we're going to be able to really pull those out because he had on a blue shirt. So... You know, if I wanted to really kind of bring down on the blues, let's see what the aquas get me. Yeah, look at that. We're, we're really starting to cook with some grease here on this particular image. I don't think he had any greens. Oh, there's some green here. Yeah, I'll leave the greens alone, though. Uh, but let's see with so there's going to be some yellow tones in his hat as well as some red tones. And then we have this red cord here. 
So let's see what we can get out of the yellows. And you can see how it's really just addressing his hat. And I don't know if I want his hat to be brighter or not. Uh, not really sure what I want there. So maybe I'll make it darker. I'm going to make the hat brighter and his face a little bit darker. Now, uh, and I think that that's going to help with getting us some of that that real separation and interest in the overall image. So I'm okay with where that color response is for the conversion. Let's come down here and take a look at what we can do with the tone. Now, typically I would do this on a completely separate adjustment, but for the sake of time and this tutorial, I'm going to just see what I can get based off of adding one filter. And so the first thing I'm going to do is probably crank a little bit of detail and you can see how that just brings the, the image to life. It's like a pop almost. Uh, and I, we're working on black and white, so might as well get some good uh, black tones in there. And I'm okay if I have uh, if I lose information. So I'm holding down the J key if you're not familiar, and that just gives me the indications of where I am completely losing information. If it's blue, I'm losing information in the shadows, and if it is red, I'm losing information in the whites. Now, I can pull my whites down, and I should get back all of that information. I don't plan to print this, so I'm also okay if I lose some information in the whites. Uh, the areas where I'm losing information are not points of detail for me, so I'm not overly concerned. I'm not losing any information in his hands, or in his hand, or in his face. So I'm 100% good with that uh, overall. And normally you would open shadows and this could be a really nice look, but instead I'm actually going to crush the shadows because I feel like this photo would really benefit from being a little bit more moody and contrasty. Um, so let's pull down on the brightness here as well. Uh, and this is where that midtone slider would really come in handy if I had one um, in this particular tone and color, but I don't. So if I wanted to do that, I can do add adjustment, we'll invert the mask, reset that. That actually looked kind of cool, like just, you know, just having fun here, right? Uh, we'll pull up on the mids and... Maybe we'll do a soft light adjustment. So let's go to blending, make it soft light. Yeah, look at that. Man, I'm just having so much fun right now. Uh, and I can increase my mid-tones until I get to a point where maybe increase exposure. So I'm really getting this like nice contrasty separation. It's a different stylistic look, whatever you like in your images. Uh, and then you can kind of fade that in until you get somewhere where you want it. So I like what I got going on with that right there. All right. So coming back over here, what else can we do with the black and white filter? Well, let's see what kind of toners we can add. Now, I could sit here all day and just go through these because this is honestly how I edit. I just grab a photo and I mess around with stuff and I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool. And then I start thinking like, oh, I could do that with this photo or I could do this with that photo. And uh, that's honestly how I learn to use software and also uh, how I create my own style. However, I think for this one, I do like the selenium looks like that just looks so awesome. So I'm going to go with the Selenium one on this particular image um, because I think that it just works so well for this particular photo. Uh, I think that this may be a little too dark for my liking. So I'm just going to go ahead and click over here and pull up on the overall um I guess, brightness, if you will, for that particular color. And I think that that works out uh, well. 
And we want to preserve the black and whites, the blacks and the whites. At least I do. You may not want to, but I'm making, you know, a black and white image here. So I want to preserve those. Uh, and then, of course, we got film grain, but I don't feel like this photo would be good for some film grain. So now the question is, should I add a lens blur? That's what I'm thinking. Uh, do I want to add a lens blur or do I believe that I have achieved enough of what I wanted to go for? So let's go ahead and add in the lens blur. And, you know, I wonder if I go, yeah, so see, I'm just having fun. One of the things that you can do with blurs in particular is you can change the blend modes over to soft light or overlay and you get like these glow filter effects. And I feel like these are kind of fun and cool to play around with. Uh, it's not something you need to do on every single photo or, you know, but it is something that you can get away with, uh, especially on this photo. I just think it looks so well. Uh, it, it, it just looks really, really cool. Now, what I can do is click on my mask and paint this away from his face. I'm going to paint this away at 100% opacity because I don't want that anywhere on his face because I want his face to be, uh, I guess, acceptably sharp. And I may even come back and throw some contrast on his beard. We'll come over the hands as well because uh, his hands have texture. And look at how this is just helping really draw us into the image. I, I, I just really enjoy doing fun stuff like this. This is a lot of fun, uh, at least for me. I'm, I'm having fun, all right? And this is what I do. I just play around with stuff until I get something that I like. And then maybe we'll add in that dynamic contrast that I mentioned earlier, uh, but I don't think I need it over the entire image, and I definitely don't need it over the blurred portions of the image, right? I want the blur to be on top of everything. So I'm going to click the mask here. We'll invert that mask, and then I am going to change my paint mode to paint in, so that way I can actually paint this over his face, like so, in the areas that I think need that dynamic contrast applied and what I like to do sometimes is just mess around with surreal and natural so surreal I think that that's a bit much even if I pull down the opacity on here uh, I still think that that's a bit much so we'll go with natural and I feel like this is just more appropriate to the overall look of the image so here's what we came into the editing bay with. And here is what I am going to call the final edit. I feel like I could just go on and on about or with this particular image. Uh, in fact, I'm noticing a hot spot that I should probably address. So let me go ahead and grab my brush here. And I am just going to paint over his blazer in this area right there and maybe push the exposure up a touch, pull down on the highlights, and maybe blend that by fading the opacity. So now there's not like this random hot spot that's just like underneath his hand. You get that separation between the glass, his hand, and his blazer, and it just helps with paying attention to what's going on up here. There's, again, a number of things that I can continue doing to this photo, but I just wanted to have a little bit of fun with editing a photo of this gentleman who I have, again, no idea who he is. So if you know who he is, I, I know he's a famous photographer, or at least a well-known photographer in New York City, um, but that's about all I know. And he might be still taking photos with this camera, which will be interesting. Uh, I I would love to see some of his work if anyone knows who he is. And I didn't catch his name. 
I was just walking on the street and uh, I, I know that somebody said his name at one point, but I wasn't as important or interested in that. So, so if you found value in today's content, consider hitting that like button. If you're new, hit that subscribe button. I make content center around on one photo raw quite often. But if you want to save a little bit of money when you check out over at the on one store, consider using my coupon code freewillphotos20. It'll save you some money whenever you check out over at on one.com. And so next time I want you to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.